There is an elephant in the room, but I can't talk about that yet. Let's table that while I talk about the manga Bunny Drop in a spoiler-free way. This is a 10-volume shoujo manga, and the basic premise is that it focuses on a 30-year-old man named Daikichi, who goes to the funeral of his grandfather, only to discover that there's a little girl there who was apparently his grandfather's love child, and no one wants to take her in. No one wants to do anything with this little girl. She's very quiet, very closed down. And he feels really sorry for her. As he sees other, mem other members of his family reject her, essentially, not to her face, but refuse to have anything to do with her, he gets increasingly incensed to the point where he finally announces that he's going to take her in and care for her. So he ends up kind of adopting this little girl named Rin. Although, to be, to be, clear, to, to be clear and to be fair, or to be clear and to be fear, um, he doesn't adopt her in the official legal sense. He is her guardian, and he makes that very clear. The art in this is blissfully simple. About half the panels actually have backgrounds, which allows you to focus on the characters and their emotions. It doesn't overwhelm you with details and try to really you know, um, uh, get, get really you know, strongly grounded in a particular locality, which I think is appropriate for this kind of story. It's fundamentally about a, a man coming to grips with the idea of being responsible for somebody else and a little girl starting to become socialized, if you will, starting to, be, to become a more normal, you know, person. Uh, I should also point out, uh, this may sound like an, a weird concept for a story, uh, but it is very much atypical. It's probably a little bit more Jose than shoujo. It's, it's aimed, I think it's aimed at a more adult audience, but there is no fan service and no sexualization whatsoever. Even in cases where the author could have put those in, it's just not there whatsoever. Uh, there are some visual tropes in terms of you know, crazy expressions, things like that, that are common to manga. And they might be a little hard for a complete newbie to manga to decipher, but they, they fit well. It's the sort of thing where I'm glad that those expressions and tropes were used in this case. They weren't just used only to be funny. I should point out to that point, there's this thing where characters, and especially in a comedy, and this is partly a comedy, sort of a, a slice of life kind of a story, where Daikichi, the adult, has these kind of over-the-top reactions to things. You know, somebody will, will say something that seems a little weird, and he'll have that shocked expression, and he'll say something, you know, really angry. I'm not sure how much of that we're meant to believe he is actually saying. The characters around him don't seem to be reacting to it in a very strong way. It appear, appears to be kind of a manga thing, so just be aware of that. It does an amazing, amazing job of showing the emotional life of a young child. You really start to care for Rin. And even if you're not into kids, even if you don't, you know, even if you, you find kids annoying, right? Um, this manga does an amazing job of getting past that. You care for this girl and not in a cheap way. It's not because somebody you know, puts a gun to her head or anything. You understand where she's coming from and you also understand the limitations she's working with. That she doesn't have a fully formed adult understanding of the world and how people interact. And so she's doing her best to respond to other people in a way that kind of won't get her into trouble, basically, right? A lot of the first couple of volumes are all about her kind of opening up after being in this environment that was very weird. And there's no indication that people were really harsh on her, or really hard on her, but she was living with this old guy and his maid, and it was, it, you know, the, um, it's very hard for a, a young child to understand how people, uh, how those people um, should be behaved with, if that makes sense. That said, um, and I don't think it's a spoiler to say, about 30% into the story, it jumps forward to 10 years later when Rin is in high school. And the rest of the story is Rin in high school, basically. Um, so it transitions from this story about a 
guy taking care of a little girl into basically a high school, not quite romance, but a, sort of a high school dramedy, right? Where there, there's a bit of drama, there's a lot of comedy. It's more of kind of a, a school life story, but more grounded in, in real world. There are no aliens or anything like that. And now we get to the elephant in the room. So, spoilers, I'm going to put a little thing right here. Spoilers. Because um, I have to address this thing that a lot of people address about the manga. As Rin grows up, she starts taking over the domestic duties of the house, voluntarily. Like, she, there's a line in there where he says that when she hits, like, middle school, she's like, I don't want you, you know, um doing my laundry I don't want you you know um, doing the cooking because you're bad at it you know let, let me just take care of that uh, and she actually does a lot of the cooking when, she, when she's younger so she's doing a lot of those domestic duties at, at, kind of at her own uh, insistence uh, in high school there's a boy as there so often is and Rin just doesn't really care for him like she she, she actually she grew up with him like she you know they, they know each other very well but she doesn't have a any you know romantic interest in him she's just a, a guy and people start asking her about you know are you going out with him are you going out with somebody else and she gets flustered and she starts thinking to herself is there a boy i like and she comes to this realization that the only person the only male character that she has any sort of emotional connection with is daikichi right um and it should be pointed out that daikichi and her relationship has has remained while clearly parental in structure like she understands he's not her dad um you know biologically but he has this you know father relationship with her um and he sees himself as you know, fundamentally her guardian and that if you know if her mother wants her back then he is prepared at least intellectually to let her go like, like you know, it's not his job to control her life in the future and so she starts to realize that she really likes the situation that she's in. She really likes living with Daikichi, doing the cooking, all that kind of stuff. And she realizes she doesn't, doesn't really want to move out. She wants to stay with Daikichi and you'll kind of take care of him. At this point, uh, Daikichi is about 40 and he works a blue collar physical labor intensive job. So he's starting to get a little bit um, worn out physically, a lot of aches and pains, right? So Rin can see that he's starting to pay right for 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 that and he spent you know 10 years of his life taking care of her she wants to take care of him now and so she explains that to daikichi and the manga is very clear to 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 to, to say that like somebody asks her so are you you know are you in love with daikichi and she goes i'm not in love with anybody in the sense that i've never been in love with a boy or a girl um, but I, you know, when I think about Daikichi, I have these strong emotional connection feelings for him. Um, so she explains this to Daikichi and he's very put off by this and they talk it out. And to be clear, there is no sense of any physical or, you know, far be it sexual attraction on either side there. They just, they really like each other. Like, and, you know, they, they, they have a, a very healthy father-daughter relationship um you know she doesn't always agree with everything he says but there, there's this, this strong bond there um she basically just wants to live with and take care of daikichi from now on um and in addition to a career or whatever she's not saying you know i i don't want a career in fact there's a segment in the, in the, the manga where she's like oh now i know what i want to do um as a career but they're dealing with this this awkwardness. So Daikichi lays down a couple of, of restrictions on this. He says, A, we are not to do anything about this until you're 18 years old. And B, I will always see you as my daughter. So you know, make no mistake about that. There will always be this relationship between the two of us. And then we move forward several years and they decide to live together as husband and wife now again there's no sense of anything physical happening between them they're just living together in this marital um they're living together in a situation in which they are both taking on the traditional role of husband and wife right 
Um, but it's not because of, you know, they want to, you know, it, it's, it's that those, uh, they're, they've been doing those things for each other anyway. And she expresses a desire to take that further. That, like, she wants to, at some point, like, have his babies. Now, he is very noncommittal to this. Um, he's very noncommittal to this whole idea of, of them being sort of this marital unit, right? Um, he seems to see this as basically humoring a daughter who doesn't want to move out. He's basically saying, look, whatever. You know, if you want to just stay here at home, that's fine. But, like, understand you're always going to be my daughter, right? That's not going to change, um, you never see them getting married, none of that, although there are some implications that maybe, you know, they, um, uh, they may have, you know, uh, there are some, in, there are some, in, at one point, like, he refers to her as his wife, but it's not sure if he's using that in a, um, sort of a joking sense, I don't know. So here's the thing, I expected this to really creep me the F out, but it didn't creep me out as much as I expected. Partly because they establish, the author establishes how this relationship is changing over time. <coughs> and, you know, he is not seeking this relationship. And she's seeking a, a relationship, in a sense, out of innocence. It's kind of like a little girl saying, I want to be your wife. She doesn't really think through the practical implications of that. And there's no indication that the practical implications of that are ever going to be realized. Right? Um... The ending does feel weird, and it feels like a wrong turn in terms of, like, I certainly would not have made that plot decision. But, A, I loved everything up to that point. I was a bit disappointed that we kind of jump from, like, five-year-old or six-year-old Rin to, like, 16-year-old Rin, and we didn't get to see any of the, you know, um, character development throughout that, that time. Um, but I, I was there for that emotional journey. I felt that that ending was just a weird place to take it. Um, and again, I should point out, there is no fan service, no physical attraction of any kind. You know, the fact that the author was very clearly um, not trying to, um, to deal with this. Oh, and I should also point out, this is also very, very important. Understand, because unfortunately, half of you probably turned off by this point. It is revealed later on that they are not related at all. Uh, that there was, uh, there was, there's no blood relation whatsoever. That um, basically the the grandfather's maid got pregnant and had nowhere else to go, and so the grandfather agreed to let her stay there, and let you know the daughter stay there with him. But there's there's no blood relation between them in any way, shape, or form. And like Daikichi knows that starting when she's like six years old. So that is a very you know it it, it is not that. Uh, and that's an, an important thing too that they kind of build up to that the fact that they have this feelings these feelings for each other, um, and there is still certainly this again parental structure. But um, so overall, again to be clear, I really enjoyed this story. I thought it was a very well told story about a girl growing up in this context. The ending is just a head scratcher, and I just don't really understand why the author went in that direction. But I don't think it spoils the story. I think you can read it and say, I really would not have done that, but I'm glad I experienced that, you know, um, uh, th that view of these two characters as they, um, you know, as they progress. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you go and check out the manga of Bunny Drop, there was an anime adaptation. It only adapts the first couple of volumes of the manga. So I believe it does not involve any of the high school time skip. So just be aware of that, um, and that is out there and, and, and available. So again, I, you know, I read it, I enjoyed it, it just, really?